Hi, I wanted to give you some information about the earth test, or rather how we choose the right setting when we carry out the earth continuity test on a class one portable appliance. Now I should say, if you've got a battery powered tester, well, they carry out the earth test using what we now refer to as the soft test. In other words, a low current test. But if you've got a mains powered machine, then you probably have a range of different settings available and it might be a bit confusing trying to work out when you would use each one. I was talking to a colleague quite recently who'd been doing pat testing professionally for a number of years and he told me that he'd only ever used a battery powered tester and he couldn't understand why in certain circumstances you might want to use a high current test. He didn't understand any of the background to it and he couldn't understand why you might ever need to do it. I thought it might be useful to explain a bit of the background behind the earth continuity test, why we've got the settings that we have, and hopefully that will give you a bit more of a deeper understanding for when you're testing your own appliances. So if we go back historically to the late 1980s, when I first got into PAT testing, PAT testing machines were quite brutal. They only did the earth test using a fixed current of 26 amps. Now the thinking behind that was that pretty much all the things that we tested at that time were big industrial appliances, catering appliances in kitchens, uh, machine tools in factories and in workshops, and pretty much everything had a 13 amp fuse in the plug. And it was decided that if the earth connection would withstand a current of 26 amps, in other words, twice the maximum fuse rating for a period of five seconds, then it would be strong enough to carry the massive current necessary to blow the fuse. And so early PAT testing machines did the earth bond test using a fixed current of 26 amps for five seconds. Then when the first code of practice came out in 1994, by that point, we'd started testing various different items. We were going into laboratories, we were going to hospitals, we were testing in school science departments, for example. We were testing things like oscilloscopes as well as big machine tools. And so it was decided that we maybe needed a range of settings. And so it was changed to one and a half times the plug fuse rating up to a maximum of 25 amps. The 25 amps comes from one of the manufacturing standards. So some pat testing machines still have a 26 amp setting available. And then we'd have maybe one or two settings in the middle, maybe perhaps an eight amp setting or a 10 amp setting for use with smaller appliances that might have thinner cables and a smaller fuse in a plug. But then we also started testing in offices and people started pat testing computers. And of course, if you put the clip on the back of a computer and put eight amps or 26 amps through the back of a PC, there's a good chance that that could cause damage. And so a special soft test was introduced, around about 100 milliamps, all the way down here. Now this isn't exactly to scale, but it'll give you an idea of what we're talking about. Um, the code of practice actually recommends between 20 and 200 milliamps, and most of the machines you see nowadays have a 100 or a 200 milliamp setting, which is used specifically for testing IT equipment. Now the problem with this low current setting is that in the early days, it wasn't very accurate. We're trying to measure a very small resistance by passing a very small current through it. And it was quite difficult for the earliest PAT testing machines to give us an accurate reading on this low current test. It was only really a question of whether it was connected or whether it wasn't. We didn't really worry too much about the readings in the early days of this low current test. But we'd use it as a compromise rather than risk damage to our equipment. We would use this low current test, which would at least tell us that the earth was connected. But if we wanted to get an accurate reading and find out how well it was connected, whether it was connected well enough to save us in the event of a fault, then we'd have to use a high current test. So fast forward 20, 25 years or so, and the PAT tester manufacturers have got a little bit better at designing PAT testing machines. The technology has increased, and nowadays we find this low current setting is a lot more accurate than it used to be, pretty much accurate enough to be used on everything. And it didn't take long before the manufacturers started releasing machines that only had the low current setting available. Now, I think originally the intention was that these would be used for testing in offices. But of course, people started using them for testing everything because the advantage of a low current tester is that it doesn't have to have that big transformer in it, which makes it lighter, which makes it cheaper to buy, which makes it easier to use, 
And of course, the big revolution was when Pat Tester started running on batteries, because then you could get around an office very quickly and test a large number of items very quickly with a battery powered tester. Now, I think that's just about okay, but I think a lot of people would still agree that this low current test isn't really giving the earth connection a really good stress. It's testing it, yes, of course it is. It's measuring the resistance a lot more accurately than it used to be. But a lot of people, myself included, would still argue that if you want to test big industrial equipment, like three phase equipment or equipment on building sites, then a high current test is still the best way to establish that the earth is fastened on properly, but a low current test is certainly a good compromise nowadays, especially as the machines are a lot more accurate than they used to be. Now there is one other thing to consider, and that is something that we now refer to as contact resistance. If you've got something like a kettle which is sitting on a base, or if you've got say something like a toaster where the exposed metal parts are plated in chrome, then you may find that this low current test doesn't give you a very accurate reading at all. Usually because you get oxidization building up, if you've got a kettle sitting on a base for example, you can get oxidization between the kettle and the base, and when you do the low current test, the very small voltage that the PAT tester puts out in order to do the test just isn't enough to break through that oxidization and we get a wildly inaccurate reading. A lot of people who have battery powered testers that only do the low current test tell me that they have real problems testing things like kettles, testing things like toasters, and if they happen to be testing in, I don't know, student accommodation, rented property or whatever, then a low current tester might give you a lot of problems because it just won't give you an accurate reading on the earth continuity test. Now, Something that has cropped up quite recently, those clever folks at Seawood have come up with something that they call their zap test. Now, this is still a low current test, but what it does, when you press the class one button, it gives us a little zap at the beginning of the test. Now, as again, not to scale, and I'm not entirely sure how short this zap is or quite how high it goes, but it puts a pulse through the earthing circuit, which breaks down that contact resistance. It's still a low current test, it won't damage anything, but it does tend overall to give you a lot more reliable readings, a lot more accurate readings when we carry out the earth test. So in summary, if you want one machine that will test everything, then my recommendation would be to try and get hold of a mains powered tester that will give you a choice of high current test and a low current test for testing your computers. If you're going to be testing purely in offices and you're only going to be testing office equipment, IT equipment and the like, then by all means get a battery power machine that just has a low current setting on it. And if you want a machine that will give you the best of both worlds, give you the portability, give you the uh, speed of use, the ease of use and being able to get around very quickly, but still give you reliable readings, then try and get hold of a machine that's got this zap technology on it that will give you a much more reliable reading on the earth test.